everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted greater health in your life and to access the inner wisdom of your body, then do we have the Body Code Show for you. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Bradley Nelson, holistic chiropractic physician and medical intuitive, the creator of my all-time favorite energy healing system, the Emotion Code, and the creator of a comprehensive mind-body-soul healing system, the Body Code. And that's just what I want to talk with him about today, about how to tap into your inner wisdom to find out what we need to heal and to thrive. That, plus we'll talk about idea allergies, physical allergies, pathogens and curses, entities and saboteurs, prions and root canals, and what in the world is a miasm. So welcome back to the show, Dr. Brad. Are you ready to shine? Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate you having well, me on. Great to be back. Thank you so much. And, and before we dive right into things, I want to find out just a little bit about your story from the beginning, but I mm -hmm. hear you're in Florida to do something kind of fun right now. Yes, absolutely. I'm very blessed. I get to come to the Hippocrates Institute uh, mm -hmm. three times a year to teach the people that are going through their health educator program. That's a nine-week program that they offer here. So I come and uh, I get to stay for a week and eat the wonderful food. They grow all of their own food, all their own sprouts and fruit and everything. It's really amazing. And, um, and I get to teach the emotion code to people that are going through our, uh, that are going through the health education program. So I spend two days doing that and, uh, the rest of the time just enjoying the, the beauty here. It's uh, really beautiful. Lots of, uh, it's in West Palm beach, Florida, very lush, lots of green vegetation and palm trees and it's a great place to come to if you've never been here before. Now, if it's all right to ask, I hear that you're working on a new version of the Emotion Code, which is like my all-time favorite book. Yes, that's right. Um, it's actually coming out in hardcover in the spring. Uh, we, um, uh, we received a number of different offers through our literary agent in New York uh, from uh, some of the top publishers in the world who want to take the Emotion Code uh, to, the, to the entire world. And so uh, we finally found one that fit, that we're really excited to work with. And so, uh, yes, we're working on a revision. It's going to be the same book, essentially, but we'll add some new stories and we'll have an extra chapter on inherited emotional energies and things like that. So we're really excited to get it out to the world. Very, very cool. And that is a woohoo! It so is a woohoo. If, <laughs> if we go back in time, I love it. You grew up in Montana. In fact, we were talking about that and, and water skiing, which I guess isn't water skiing anymore, but is like surfing behind the boat. Tell us what your health was like before age 13 and then what happened. Well, um, when I was seven years old, I was really sick with the measles and I had an amazing experience where um, uh, I had overheard my parents talking about how the next day I was going into the hospital into something called an oxygen tent. And I didn't know really what that meant. But my parents came into the room. They had made a, uh, a bed for me upstairs so I could be near their bedroom. They would made a bed for me on this couch in the living room. And this particular night, they came into the room, and my mother said to my father, will you kneel down and say a prayer so that our boy will be able to get well? And so they did. And in the middle of this prayer uh, that my father was offering, I had this change that started at the top of my head and went whoosh through my body that fast, and I was instantly made well. And to go from being really sick one moment to being totally healed the next instant is something totally unforgettable that uh, uh, is so remarkable and so unusual uh, and really so incredible. Uh, you can't forget it. And I held my tongue till my dad was done praying and I said, I'm better. I'm, I'm healed. I'm well. God healed me. And they said, well, that's fine, honey. Go back to sleep. You're going into the oxygen tent tomorrow. But the next day proved I was better. And then when I was 13, I developed kidney disease. And um, it, was, it was horrifically painful. And my parents took me to the hospital. Of course, they ran all these tests. And they said I had kidney disease and that it was about 50% fatal. But there was nothing treat, uh, no treatment available for me in Western medicine. So my parents decided that they would take me to see um, some alternative doctors. And uh, these doctors did things that were completely outside of mainstream medicine. But it was apparently exactly what my body needed because within short order, I started getting better. And um, within a few weeks, I was completely well. And my parents took me back to the hospital, and they ran all the tests. And as I recall, they ran all the tests twice. And they said, well, it's a spontaneous remission. It's remarkable. Whatever we did must have helped. 
And I knew that they hadn't really done anything, but these other people had. So I decided I wanted to be a doctor at that point. And uh, not just any kind of doctor, but the kind of doctor that actually helps people in natural ways. So time went on. I got more and more involved in computers and business and other things. And eventually it was, uh, I was brought back to a point where I had to decide, I was at a crossroads, what I was going to do with my life, either the business world and computers or the healing world. And uh, it was a very powerful, very direct answer to prayer that brought me back to the healing arts. So when I got into practice, uh, I went to school, chiropractic Mind, mind school. if I pause you for a quick second? Mm -hmm. uh, so you went into prayer. What did that look like? What, and you said it was a very, a very clear oh. answer. Yeah, well, I got on my knees and I prayed. Um, I, you see, that initial experience when I was seven years old yeah. uh, was very powerful for me. I was only seven. But what it taught me was that um, there's a higher power that we can draw upon, that we can ask that power for help, and we can get it. And that's what healed me when I was seven. And so all those years later, uh, when I was asking for help, that was the beginning really of that knowledge that you can ask for help and you can receive help. And so um, that made a very big, uh, it had a re really profound effect on me. So when I'm, when I'm talking about praying, I was just on my knees uh, at the side of my bed, just praying and asking God, you know, what? What should I do with my life? Do you have anything to say about this? I'll do whatever you think. And so what actually happened was the first night I did that, um, I was awakened three different times. Yeah. And each, each time that I was awakened, my mind was full of all these warm, happy thoughts about helping other people and serving people and healing people naturally and how great that is. And so that you know, I thought about it and I thought, well, that's great, but you know, computers and so on, that's also really great. And so I went back to sleep and, uh, that happened three times. I was awakened three times and the same thing happened. So then the second night I'm on my knees again, praying before I go to bed and asking God to help me to know what to do. And I have the same experience on the second night, three times I'm awakened. But on the second night, each time that I was awakened, the, the feelings of thoughts of service to, of, uh, to, to uh, people and uh, and how wonderful that is, uh, they, the feelings were geometrically more powerful, uh, exponentially more powerful. Until the third time on that second night when I was awakened, the thoughts of service to mankind and humanity and the whole entire world were absolutely overwhelming. And right then I actually heard a voice that spoke to me as clearly as anything I've ever heard. And it said, this is a sacred calling. And so that was the answer that um, that I was looking for. And so I thought, okay, awesome. So when I got into school, uh, I tried to stay open to, to any kind of possibilities. And when I got out of school, I got into practice, I was in this, I formed this habit that every time I saw somebody, I would just take a moment, just a few seconds really, and I would ask for help from that higher power, from God or source energy, or however you want to refer to it. And um, there were times during those years when someone would come in to see me and I didn't know how to approach their problem, I didn't know how to deal with them, I didn't know what to do, how to take care of them, and uh, in response to that silent, short, brief asking for help, that prayer, the information would literally just flood into my being about what to do for them and how to, how to look at their problem and how to, percept, uh, how to perceive it and how to, how to really help them. And um, it was an amazing thing. Now, in all the years I was, I was in uh, practice, uh, brick and mortar practice for 17 years, that kind of thing only happened on probably a handful of occasions. I can probably count those occasions on one hand. The rest of the time, it was just little bits here and there. But, um, but I know that that higher power is aware of us and everything we're doing all the time. And so, um, yeah, it's, uh, that's really where the information came from. Uh, the emotion code, the body code. I was just trying to help people. I was obsessed, really, with trying to understand what was really wrong with them. Why did my patients have symptoms? Uh, what were the real underlying causes of their symptoms? And my reasoning was if I could fix the true underlying causes of their symptoms, then their symptoms could go away and then they could go on with their lives. And what I learned was, of course, uh, the emotional baggage that we all have, that we pick up during our lives, 
affects us physically and mentally and emotionally. And that's why I wrote The Emotion Code and published that 11 years ago. Well, about a year after I published The Emotion Code, I woke up one morning and <clears throat> excuse me, my mind was full of instruction. And the instruction was uh, very specific. It said, you need to take everything that you've learned about natural healing and put it into a self-study course that anyone can learn and make it available to everyone everywhere. And so I, I sat on that for about three months, just thinking about how much work it was going to be. And then I started working. It took me a year to produce what we now call the body code. And um, that was body code 1.0. We now have body code uh, 2.0. And uh, we're working on body code 3.0. Um, but, uh, but anyway, that's uh, the body code is basically everything that I learned during all those years about natural healing from other people and other places, but also from, uh, from that higher power. And so it's all in one uh, self-study course that anyone can learn. And uh, we believe it's the most advanced self-study course on energy healing that exists in the world. And uh, it's also the most powerful method of energy medicine, we believe, that exists in the world. And uh, it's so unique, it's actually patented. And so um, we're trying to make it available in every language uh, all over the world. And we have English and Spanish and German so far. And we have other ones that we're going to be releasing soon. So Very cool. And, and, and I was diving into it and the amount of... I don't even know if thoroughness is the, is the right word. The, the only, only uh, description that I could come up with, and, and I say it in the most loving way, and I said it before the show, is, <laughs> is you're a mad scientist because <laughs> of the detail and the level. And, and the, um, there, there are topics covered in there that are just coming to the forefront now. And you put them in there. So it's, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. So before we go into the body code, and we'll, we'll use me here mm -hmm. as a guinea pig in a few minutes, I want to talk mm -hmm. about how the subconscious talks to us and how it guides us through this process. So what's going on with the subconscious? Well, think about this, okay? Have you ever had a situation where you found out that you, you needed to take something uh, maybe you found out, maybe you went and visited a, a doctor, a nutritionist, and found out that you had a deficiency of something, and it had been in the back of your mind for a few months. That was your subconscious mind trying to tell you. Uh, the subconscious mind is very, very powerful. And of course, we live in our conscious mind, and the conscious mind is a very, very, very tiny part of our, our total intelligence. Uh, the subconscious mind, on the other hand, is the vast bulk of our intelligence, and that part of us is so smart that it can take a ham sandwich that you have for lunch and it can convert that into new cardiac muscle tissue or new nerve cells or new red blood cells. There are 137 trillion cells, they say, in the body. Your subconscious mind is aware of every one of those cells, I believe, and um, understands everything that's going on with you down to, a, down to the quantum level and even beyond that. So that your subconscious, you see, is like this archiving holographic computer. It's remembering everything you've ever done, everything you've ever eaten, everything you've ever tasted, every face you've ever seen in a, uh, in a crowd, uh, the whole history of your health or disease is all in there in that subconscious mind, you see. And so what we do with the emotion code and the body code is we, we access the subconscious mind. We rely on the subconscious mind to give us the answers we need about what the body really needs. And it works very, very well. In fact, during those, uh, during those years that I was in practice, during the last 10 years that I was in practice, most of the patients that I was seeing had been told there really was no cure for them at all in Western medicine. There was nothing that could be done for them. And the vast majority of those people were able to get well because uh, we were able to use the body code and figure out what the true underlying causes of their problems really were, you see. And uh, the bottom line is if you've been diagnosed with some kind of disease, uh, most people that you talk to are not going to have any idea why you've been diagnosed with that disease, including your doctors. And they'll tell you that. Well, we really don't know why you have this disease. You know, we don't know why you have cancer. We don't know why you've been diagnosed with lupus or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome or any of these diseases. They don't know. They'll give you medication because they, they want to give you something to try to make your life easier. But those things do not solve the underlying problems, you see. And the paradigm for the 21st century is that we are now learning how to find the, the true underlying causes of our diseases and our imbalances, and we're learning to, how to address those. And that is where the game is played, you see. And that is the future of healing, all healing, really. 
is to get to the underlying root causes and fix those. And that is what the body code allows us to do for the first time uh, in really in recorded history in a very specific, very easy, very rapid uh, and efficient way. So let's, we're going to dive in there in a minute. First off, I'm wondering if you can give us kind of muscle testing 101. And I, I muscle test throughout the show. Mm -hmm. I muscle test when I coach. I don't think I could go down the street without muscle testing about a half dozen <laughs> things. <laughs> Because it's, it's a direct line to my subconscious. So maybe you can yes. share with us what it is, how it works, and how we can start cultivating this ourselves. Well, let me share with your listeners something that, um, that we call the sway test. And, and I'll explain how this works. They've done studies with plants. Now, of course, if you have a plant and you put it in a pot and you put it over near a window, if you don't rotate the pot once in a while, you'll notice that eventually the plant is going to be bent towards the light coming from the window, right? We all know that. Um, they've done studies with plants and they found that if you put a plant in a pot in a room that has uniform lighting, grow lights all around, the plant will grow straight up. That makes sense, right? But they found that if you put a speaker in, in a room like that and the speaker is playing beautiful, soothing music and lullabies, in that room that has uniform lighting all around, the plant will grow, instead of growing straight up, it'll grow towards the speaker. Be because the speaker is playing these positive things and there's positive energy coming out of that speaker, I guess you could say. On the other hand, in a room like that, if they put a speaker in the room and it's playing harsh, grating sounds, uh, screamo types of music, uh, things like that, things that are annoying, um, what will happen is the plant will grow away from that sound coming out of that speaker. In fact, the roots themselves will bend away from the sound coming out of that speaker. Now, the human body has the same ability to respond to positive or negative input. So your body, if you're standing and you're very relaxed, your body, if you're holding thoughts of truth or positivity or congruency, your body will tend to sway forward. And if you're holding thoughts of falsehood, uh, incongruency, uh, negativity, the body will tend to sway backward. So you... Your listeners can do this with me. Um, now, if you're driving, then you should wait until you get home. But what you can do is you can stand there, drop your hands to your sides, and just totally relax. And close your eyes. Now, you can also do this while you're sitting. Uh, so, Michael, if you're sitting, you can just move, to the, uh, move right to the front of your chair, and you can do this. Yep. Works a little better uh, standing, but it also works sitting. So uh, close your eyes, just totally relax your body. And the first thing that you'll notice is it's impossible to, to sit or to stand and be perfectly still. Uh, and that's just your postural muscles that are working to keep you standing up, right? There's always a little bit of motion going on. That's totally normal. But I'd like you to think about something now. Let's think about something. We'll start with something negative. Think about the word war. Now, we hear that word. Um, Every day. We've heard that word probably pretty much all of our lives, almost every day. But I'd like you to think for a moment about what really goes on in war. As you're standing there, totally relaxed, or sitting there, totally relaxed on the edge of your chair, just think about that word war for a moment. What, what's really going on in war? What are people doing to other people in wars? What's really happening there on a human level? What's happening to villages and families and husbands and wives and cities. What's happening when villages and cities are being bombed, wars are being fought there? How many tears have been shed from all the wars that have been fought on this planet since day one? Now, the moment your subconscious mind begins to connect with what your conscious mind is thinking, at that moment, you, your body will start to sway backwards away from the sheer negativity of that thought of war. Now, like I said, it's easier to do this when you're standing. We call this the sway test. So, Michael, I know that you're sitting on the edge of your chair. D did you notice your body going back backwards on that one? Oh, yeah. I actually had to manually prop myself back up or else it would look like I'm in a Barco lounge here because I would, I would go back so far <laughs> while we're doing this. <laughs> okay. I just wanted so let's to try this repulse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your subconscious mind trying to move you away from the sheer negativity of that thought, right? Mm -hmm. It's your subconscious acting on your physical body, moving you backwards, moving you away. 
So now let's try something different. So close your eyes, drop your hands mm -hmm. to your sides, totally relax, sitting mm -hmm. on the edge of your chair or standing. Uh, and let's think about this. Imagine, think of someone in your life that you really love, that you're really grateful for, someone that's maybe done something wonderful for you. Maybe it's your mom or dad. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a, a new grandbaby that you have, or maybe it's a friend. Think about that person that, that you really love and, and appreciate. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to imagine that you're standing in front of that person. And imagine that your heart is so full, full of love for that person, full of gratitude for whatever it is that they have done for you. I'd like you to imagine yourself telling them how much you love them and how grateful you are to them. And as you do that, as your heart is filled with that feeling of love and gratitude, you'll notice that your body will start to sway forward. Your body is swaying forward because that's your subconscious mind trying to move you towards the sheer positivity uh, of those very, very high vibrations of love and gratitude. So if this didn't work for you, sometimes it takes, you know, 10 seconds or so. The more you do this, the easier it gets and the faster your body will respond. Now, we call this the sway test. So one of the things that you can do with this, and, and of course, for many people, this is the first time that they've actually um, given their subconscious mind a chance to speak to them in such a demonstrable way through this medium, really, of their physical body. But what you can do is you can ask other questions. Like, for example, you could ask, um, do I have emotional baggage that needs to be released? Hold that thought in your mind. Do I have emotional baggage that needs to be released? And within about 10 seconds or so, your body should start to sway forward or backward. And you don't want to force anything. You just allow your body to do what it wants to do. And you just kind of be the neutral observer to that, okay? But you can ask questions and get answers from the subconscious mind. And uh, you, can, you can ask questions that have a yes or no answer, and the body will give you a yes or no by swaying forward for yes or backward for no. And it's, it's really just that simple. Now, this is one method that we teach. There are a bunch of other methods that we teach, other ways of getting answers, one of the things that we have found is that the body will be slightly stronger when the answer that is being given is yes. The body, on the other hand, will be slightly weaker if the answer that is coming from the subconscious mind is no. And so uh, I didn't invent this. has been around for a long, long time. It's known, as, it's known as kinesiology or muscle testing. So, for example, you can go to a friend. You can have them hold out their arm and try to resist your downward pressure. And if they say their name is their name, like for example, if I were to say my name is Brad, if you were to press down on my arm, I'd be able to resist you. But if I said something that wasn't true, like my name is Shirley, my arm would go down and stop Shirley, calling you Shirley. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't resist. We have other methods of self-testing too, where you can test yourself. We use the ring in ring method like this, where you yep. can put a ring, uh, put one ring inside of another ring. And as you're asking questions, if the answer coming from the subconscious mind is yes, you'll be slightly stronger, and so the rings will tend to stay together. I'm going to describe that for those listening. Uh, bear with yeah. me one sec. For, for those listening, sure. you've got your thumb and forefinger together, interlocked with your thumb and forefinger, like links in a chain. Mm -hmm. Like links in a chain. And as you're asking questions, if the answer coming from the subconscious is yes, you'll be a little stronger, and so the rings will tend to stay together as you gently try to pull them apart. On the other hand, if the answer coming from the subconscious mind is no, you'll be a little weaker. And so when you tug on those rings, they will tend to break open. So there are a whole bunch of different methods of muscle testing like this. But um, what we do is we use these methods to tap in to what we believe is the most powerful computer in the known universe. And that is actually the subconscious mind that is within each one of us. And... Uh, since the subconscious knows what's going on, we can ask questions and get answers in a very concrete way. Now, when I was in practice, I had people coming to me 
of all ages who are suffering from all kinds of conditions, uh, from chronic uh, conditions um, like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, infertility, asthma, digestive disorders, chronic pain problems, low back pain, neck pain, tennis elbow, uh, problems like vertigo, um, depression, anxiety, phobias, panic attacks, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, eating disorders, self-sabotage of all kinds. And what I found was that no matter what a person was suffering from, what was really going on with them is that they were feeling the results of the imbalances that their body uh, had going on. Now, the oldest idea in the history of healing is that imbalance is what causes disease, imbalance. And if you can restore balance to the body, you can live longer and be more healthy and you can recover from all kinds of diseases. And so that's the idea behind the body code. Now, what I found during all those years that I was in practice is that we suffer from six different kinds of imbalances. And, uh, and we show those in the body code. Maybe this would be a good time to actually bring it up on the screen. What do you think? Excellent. We, we tested this out quite a bit, so I'm excited to see how it works for people. Cross your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll work. Can you see it? Yes. Yes, I okay. can. So the, the background to this is that I used to be a computer programmer starting in the early 1980s. And so when I got into practice, I was always trying to blend my knowledge of computers with the work that I was doing with the body. And so it, it led me eventually to put together this system that we call the body code. And it looks like this. And essentially what this is, is a, um, it's a patented software that enables us to drill down very rapidly and find out what the problems are. So here you see the six underlying causes, of the six categories of imbalances that cause all the troubles that we suffer from. So let's take a quick look at these. On, uh, here we have pathogens. And if mm -hmm. I click on that one, you can see, pathogens are things like parasites, fungal infections, bacterial infections, viral infections, mold. These are organisms that get into the body from the outside that set up housekeeping. And uh, if you don't get rid of these, then you're not going to be as healthy as you could be. And that makes sense, right? If we look at this one, uh, this area is misalignments. Now, as a chiropractor, I was trained to find misalignments and fix them, primarily in the spine. As time went on, however, we'll click on that one, I found that uh, any tissue can become misaligned in the body. And so we have all of the tissues represented here. And uh, the most common area of misalignment that we find, of course, as you might expect, is things in the skeleton. And we might find uh, things in the axial skeleton. We might find bones, uh, uh, bones in the spine out of alignment, or we might find ribs out of alignment, etc., you just never know. Anything can misalign. Any tissue can misalign. But if there's something out of alignment in your body, you're not going to function as well as you should. Okay? And that's, I think that's pretty obvious and makes sense. Down here, we have imbalances of nutrition and lifestyle. So if I click down here on this one, you can see we have things like uh, color deficiency, sleep deficiencies. Um, things that you might need that aren't necessarily part of the body code, things like, for example, chiropractic care, energy techniques, and so on. Those are all in there, including different kinds of uh, sports and uh, exercise techniques. There's dehydration. There's malnutrition. That's both physical uh, and spiritual, by the way, which is interesting. And then pH imbalance. We also have things like foods and herbs and nutrients. So, for example, if I go here, uh, we have uh, we have a table that uh, mm -hmm. that pops up that looks kind of like the emotion code chart that has the uh, all the nutrients in there. I can't show you on this version. This is kind of a test version. It doesn't have that involved uh, installed yet. But uh, we have tables of all the foods and herbs and so on. And so um, uh, to give you an idea how powerful this can be, um, there was a patient that came to me once uh, who'd been hospitalized for five days. And uh, she had this terrible pain is why they hospitalized her. They tried everything, uh, every test that they could, uh, tested everything, couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. And they finally decided that it was kind of in her head. She was a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy, they thought. And so they let her go from the hospital. They said, we think it's all in your head. You have to go. Well, she was really in pain. She came in to see me and she's still in pain. 
And so I used the body code on her and uh, found a few things and fixed them. One of the things that I found, which I thought was just an incidental finding, was that she needed chromium. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went right to that part of the chart. And I said, I, well, it looks like you need chromium. I don't have any right now. We're out of it. Um, it sounds like it's something that you might need to get. I didn't think much about it. So the next day she comes back into my office and she's, she's still in pain. In fact, she's even worse. And I didn't know what else to do. I, I was really um, very concerned about her. And I opened the body code and it took us right into this area, foods, herbs, and nutrients, yeah. right into the nutrient area. And we were able to find out that it was uh, the first thing that showed up was chromium. And then I remember from the day before and I said, oh, yeah, wait a minute. That showed up yesterday. I think your body really needs that. Your body's trying to tell us you need this. I want you to leave right now. Leave my office. Drive down the street. Go to the health food store. Buy some chromium. Open it right there. Have them give you some water and take it right then. And she did. And 20 minutes later, she's jumping up and down literally in my waiting room saying, I'm fixed. I'm fixed. It was amazing. She said, the moment she took it, the pain was gone. And she said, how did that work? And I said, I really don't know. And I still don't know. But you see... The subconscious mind is very, very willing to talk to you, okay? Um, your own subconscious mind knows what's going on with you on a perfect level, uh, with a perfect understanding, and it knows what you need. So if we go down here to toxins, mm -hmm. uh, we have things like dental toxicity. Uh, so one of the things that we find, for example, is that a lot of people have mercury toxicity. Uh, fluoride, of course, is another kind of a toxin. Cavities are in here. Root canals. Doctors, uh, alternative doctors now who uh, are working with uh, women who have breast cancer find that uh, about 98% of the time when they do a thermographic study and they do a heat map of the body, the cancer will show up as a hot area on the body. But on that same side, 98 times out of 100, they will find hot spots in the jaw. And those hot spots are usually either a root canal tooth that has to be removed because they can't be sterilized. And they're putting out this, uh, these toxins from the bacteria that are living in there. Or it could be a cavitation. That's an area of dead infected bone from a tooth that's been pulled. So those are the kinds of toxins we see. Other things like chemical toxins, environmental, food additives, medical, recreational drugs, things like that. Uh, heavy metals. Uh, even things from Chinese medicine uh, like the six pernicious influences where anciently the Chinese believed that Things like cold and dryness, heat, dampness, wind, and summer heat, those are energies from the outside that can get into the body and can cause problems. And uh, here we have all the circuitry of the body. Of course, all the acupuncture uh, meridians are here. And also we have things that you won't see uh, in other places like, um, like these, disconnections. Uh, for example, morning sickness you'll see on here. Uh, my wife was very, very sick with morning sickness when she was pregnant with our youngest daughter, who now is 18, and uh, she was begging me to help her, and I was thinking of the things that I'd recommended for people before that aren't really all that effective. Uh, there wasn't anything really that effective for it, and so I prayed, and I asked God if he had anything to say about this, if there was a better way to do this, and I got this answer that came, and the answer was, well... You'd feel really sick, too, if you had a new life growing inside of you, especially if you weren't connected with it. And so that was the answer. And so, uh, so we know now how to reconnect the mother with the baby, and the morning sickness will usually just stop instantly. So and I've got to ask, how do you reconnect the mama with the baby? Well, if we click on this one, it has to do with the, either the mother is disconnected from that baby or the baby is disconnected from the mother. And so uh, it can be various different parts. You have to look at not only the fetus, but also the placenta, the amniotic fluid, and the umbilical. And any one of those parts can be disconnected. And it's a, uh, it's a communication linkage that goes both ways. The mother has to be connected to the, mm -hmm. to the baby, all four of these parts, and the baby has to be connected to the mother. And so uh, it's an interesting process that, uh, that we go through. It's, it's pretty simple. But it works really, really well. In fact, um, uh, it's worked every time I've done it on women. Uh, it worked on my wife. Uh, she was the first one. And uh, the morning sickness was immediately gone. A few days later, it started to come back again a little. And I checked her. And there was a disconnection that had happened. So we reconnected it. And when we reconnect things, what I'm talking about is when we use the body code, just about everything that we do, we are swiping either with a magnet or mm -hmm. with fingertips 
on the governing meridian, which starts at the tailbone and comes up over the top of the head to the upper lip. And so we'll just pass a magnet going this way to reconnect mother to fetus or this direction to reconnect some part of the fetus to the mother. So since um, I can't see you, I can't see you since we're on sh sh uh, uh, your shared oh, screen right now. Which way is right. which? Well, if we're, um, we, let me turn this off for a second. Let me know when you can see me and I'll show you. All right. And then one more question on this and then, then let, let's, uh, let's run me through this if we can. Sure. So, so um, I, don't see, I don't see you yet. Oh, oh. now you're back. Okay. Oh, now I'm back. Okay. So when we're reconnecting part of the, uh, part of the fetus to the mother, we'll mm -hmm. go up the governing meridian. Okay. Or in other words, in this direction. Okay. Okay. Up and over if the we're head. Reconnecting, yeah, if we're reconnecting part of the mother to some part of the fetus, we'll go in this direction. Now, down from the top of the head. Yeah, down the governing meridian, exactly. So anyway, that is, um, that's that one. That's just one of the things that you'll see uh, sometimes. And we, have, we actually have practitioners now uh, who – we've got about, almost 1,000 body code practitioners now in about mm -hmm. 40 countries around the world. Uh, we have a, uh, about 4,200 certified emotion code practitioners in about 73 countries around the world. But we do have body code practitioners who, um, who just specialize in working with morning sickness and nausea. It's really interesting. It's, uh, that's all they do. The ancillary question, I guess, that I would mm -hmm. have to ask, if, if, because my wife's the producer, she'll be listening to this afterwards, she, huh? she would say, for women out there, how about cramps? Well... Yes, oftentimes uh, cramps are the result of uh, some kind of a deficiency of, uh, of a mineral. Oftentimes it's either calcium or manganese or magnesium. Uh, there can be other reasons too. Now, with the, with the body code, let me know if you can see it again. Yeah, I can see it again. There. The beautiful thing about the body code is that we, we simply ask the subconscious mind what's going on and it takes us there. So... For example, um, if you'd like to, we can. Uh, if you'd like to, we can work on you and, and show everybody how this is done uh, at Let's a do distance. It. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that we like to do is uh, take a moment and yeah. and ask for some help from up above. And so I can do that for us. You you're, feel free to do that as well. We'll just take a moment here. Okay, great. So that just takes a second. And uh, now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my camera back on here for a minute. Now, let's see. Hold on a minute. Okay. There you are. I mean, let me know when you can see my camera or when you can yep. see me. Okay, great. So what I'll be doing today is I'll be using the, uh, the ring and ring method. Okay. Okay. And uh, I'll be asking questions. Now, the first question is, are we connected energetically? Now, in the emotion code and the body code, we teach you how to actually work directly with another person no matter where they might be in the world. The human body has this amazing ability that is built right into it to set aside its own needs to act on behalf of someone else and we call this working by proxy. And so what I can ask right now and I'll get a strong answer for yes, a weak answer for no, uh, the answer that I'm looking for is, um, the question is, uh, can I act as proxy for you, Michael? And the answer is yes. Okay, so we're connected right now. So my body has set aside its own needs to the extent that uh, normally if I were to say my name is Brad, that would be strong. Right mm -hmm. now, if I say my name is Brad, I'm actually weak. Why? Because my name is Michael. Temporarily <laughs> is true, you see. All right. So let's go back to the body code. Okay. All right. And let's just see what we've got going on here. Okay. So, uh, so Michael, let's see. You, do you have any kind of a physical um, issue or mental, emotional issue that you'd like to like to address? And we'll see if we can find the answers to it. There are two challenges right now. First off, I'm having a stomach challenge since we moved into this house. And okay. then secondly, while I usually have bomber strong knees, um, there may be more on the bomb side of things <laughs> temporarily, particularly the okay. left one. Left knee. Okay, so let, let's take a look at your net left knee first. Okay. And so, um, so I'm acting as proxy for you. So what this means is that I can ask questions of your subconscious mind. The answer from your subconscious mind instantly manifests in my subconscious mind, and I'm able to pick up that answer by 
asking by by doing the muscle test and either getting a strong answer for yes or a weakness for no. So let's ask this question. Is there an underlying reason why uh, your left knee is giving you trouble? And the answer is yes. There's a there's a yes answer there. So right now, your subconscious mind has a reason in mind. There's an imbalance that it has in mind. Now, I have to basically play charades, if you will, to figure out what that imbalance is. So we look at our body code and we ask, first of all, okay, is this imbalance on the right side of our chart here? And I'm getting a no answer, weak answer. My, my fingers are breaking open. The rings are breaking. That's a no. So it's on the right side. So on the right side, we have energy, circuits and systems and toxins. Let's see what it is. Um, is it uh, some kind of a toxin? No. Is it something in circuits and systems? The rings break. That's a no. So that means it's in the energies area. I get a strong answer there. We'll go there. So when I click on that, it brings up six different possibilities now. We're, we're digging deeper, and your subconscious mind is taking us to the underlying cause of this issue. So what is this, uh, this cause? Is it something on the left side here that's either post-traumatic, offensive energies, or mental energies? No, it's not any of those. On the right side, we have emotional uh, imbalances. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay, so we'll go there. Okay, and so now we're yet another level down into this knowledge base of the body code. And so we have trapped emotions here, a heart wall, uh, and emotional resonances. Is this uh, a trapped emotion of some kind? No. Uh, is it a heart wall? No. It's, a, it's an emotional resonance. Now, an emotional resonance is an energetic ringing in the body that occurs after some kind of an emotional event. Kind of like if you take a hammer and you hit a big bell with a hammer, bong, it rings for a while. Come back an hour later, you won't be able to hear it, but your dog probably will um, because it's still ringing, really. And that's what's going on in your body. You have an emotional energy that is ringing in your body, and let's see what that energy is. It's imbalancing your body. Uh, is this an energy that's listed here in column A on our chart? And the answer there is no, that's weak. So we just eliminated everything in column A. Now we know it's in one of these uh, rows in column B. So is it in one of the odd rows in column B? No. So we've eliminated rows one and three and five in column B. We have uh, six, We have three, uh, three cells left, either two or four or six in column B. So is it in row two in column B? No. We have 10 emotions left. Uh, is it in row four in column B? Yes, that's strong. So it's one of these five. So is the emotion depression? Is that what it is? I get a weak answer there now. So is it frustration? No. Is it uh, indecisiveness? No. Is it taken? Uh, is it panic? Is that what it is? Yes. Taken for granted? No. So it's an emotion of panic. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's see. Do we need to know more about this emotion? We do. And so let's see here. So, Michael, do you want to share how old you are? Uh, yeah, 47. 47. Okay. Did this occur earlier? Uh, we'll divide your life roughly in half. Did this occur earlier than age 25? It did. So this, this emotional energy goes back a ways. Did it occur earlier than age 20? Yes. Earlier than age 10? No. So it's between 10 and 20. So I was getting strong answers for yes and a weak answer there for no. Did it occur between 10 to 15? That's a no. That's weak. Around age 16? That's weak. That's a no. 17, no, 18, 18, no, 19. I'm getting a, a strong on age 19. Now, you might have been chronologically 18 or maybe 20, but you're probably age 19. And uh, these are accurate within about a year, give or take. So there was something that happened around that age. Now, about 20% of the time, uh, people will remember right away or it will it'll pop into their head. Oh, right. That's when such and such happened. Most of the time they don't, but that's okay. So does that ring any kind of a bell? Well, 19, I was in college, and I was certainly nervous about my knee on the trails. That wasn't extra exactly traumatic. At 21 or 22, I was hit by a car and ended up having, they opened the knee up to insert a rod through it. That, that was, was a couple years knee. later. So that was the left knee. Ah, the left knee. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Well, um, was this from the accident? No. Was it from the surgery? No. Uh, was it from, did it have to do, did it have anything to do with your knee at the time? No, there was something else that happened. I'm getting a no on that. There was something else that happened, a panic sort of a situation. And uh, if it's important uh, for your subconscious mind to really get total closure on this, it will bring it back to your remembrance, but it might take a day or two. 
And if you don't remember anything right now, that's okay. Let's ask. Well, there were know. there were other yeah. traumatic events, not knee related. Um, at 19, I was trying to qualify, not trying to. I was qualified for national championships, and I was a week or two away from going when uh, two riders crashed each other out in front of me as I was sprinting to pass them, and mm -hmm. I ended up with a uh, right side reconstructive surgery on my right elbow. That was traumatic at at uh, uh, 19. Um, that was probably the most traumatic event of that year. Let's ask if that's what that was about. Yep, actually, I get a very strong answer on that one. So it was created by that event, apparently. Do we need to know more about it? No. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, actually, let me turn on, let me turn on my camera, and I'll just show everybody how this works. Let me know when you can see me again. Yep, gotcha. Okay, to release this energy. Remember, I'm acting as proxy for you, and this is how our mm -hmm. practitioners worldwide do this for other people. I'm just going to take my fingertips, and I'm going to put them in the middle of my forehead. I'm putting them on the governing meridian, and I'm just going to go over this meridian once, twice, mm -hmm. three times to release that energy, kind of like taking a credit card out of your wallet and rubbing a magnet on the magnetic strip. It erases mm -hmm. the data. It's the same thing, essentially. So now I'm going to ask, did we release that trapped emotion of panic from you? Yes, we did. Okay, so that's strong, and we did that. So let's go back now, and uh, we'll go back to the body code. Mm -hmm. And we release that resonance, that energy of panic. Now, the interesting thing about this is, let me show you something. If we go into the body code, can you see the body code okay? Yep. Okay. Um, one of the things that you'll find is that uh, – there's a lot of information in here in the body code, and as you use it, you learn how the body really works. So, for example, here we have all the organs, and you can see all the information there. But if we go to the glands, and we go to the adrenal glands right here, mm -hmm. what you'll notice is right there, pain in the left knee. Now, why is that? The reason why is because there are muscles that are connected to they, the adrenal gland that are on the same circuit and those will cross the leg muscles there. Or they'll cross the knee joint and they'll tend to cause pain and left knee, low back and so on. So, um, so you'll, if you use the body code, you really learn about how everything is interconnected, how the muscles are connected to the, uh, uh, to the organs and the glands and how, uh, for example, if you have right knee pain, it's usually gallbladder. You have left knee pain. It's usually related to the left adrenal gland and so on. You'll learn how the paired organs in the body um, have the left side as the main and the right side as the reserve. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing about it is it enables um, people to find things that otherwise they wouldn't be able to find. So, for example, here we have energies and we have things like trapped emotions, like what we just saw, uh, allergies, physical allergies to ideas something called addictive heart energy, which uh, is the driving force behind a lot of addiction. Um, we have post-traumatic energies like psychic trauma, where you experience more than one emotion simultaneously and they get trapped in the body and form one ball of energy. Um, physical trauma, where you might get hit. And uh, inflammation, miasms, which are distortions in the energy field that can be passed down. So uh, uh, offensive energies, like being courted to somebody that you don't want to be energetically connected to, uh, post-hypnotic suggestions, saboteurs, where somebody really did stab you in the back at some point or, or something like that. Entities, um, curses, uh, lots of interesting things. So, um, so anyway, uh, let's take a look and let's, let's come back and ask that same question again about your knee. Is there an underlying reason uh, why your left knee has been giving you trouble. Now, I'm getting a yes answer there. That means that there's another underlying imbalance. So is that imbalance because, uh, let's see, is, it, is that imbalance on the right side of our body code chart? And I'm getting a no there. So that means it's over here. So is it in the energies area? No. Is it in circuits and systems? Yes. So is it in uh, one of these on the left side? No. Is it in an organ or a gland? It is in a gland. And is it a gland on the right or the left? So is it thyroid, thymus, testicles, prostate, pituitary? It is adrenal. So let's take a look at this. So this one did show up just now. And so let's ask, 
Uh, is this the left adrenal gland? It is, the left adrenal gland. So the left adrenal gland um, is imbalanced or unhappy. Let's go back to the homepage and let's ask, is there an underlying reason why that left adrenal gland is unhappy? And the answer is yes. And is the reason on the right side of our chart, you know, it's on this side, of toxins, circuits and systems, it's some kind of energy. Is it something on the left side here? And that's no, so it's over here. So is it addictive heart energy or an allergy or an intolerance? Those are all no, so it's something emotional. Is this a trapped emotion? Yes. So this is a similar process. Let's ask, is this emotion in column A? Yes. Is it in one of the odd rows in column A? Yes. Is it in row one? No. Uh, row three is strong. So it's one of these. So is it crying? No, that's weak. Is it discouragement? No, that's weak. Is it rejection? No, that one's weak. Sadness? No. Sorrow? No. Okay, they're all weak. Now, you, when you're using the emotion code and you're taken to a certain column in a certain row, mm -hmm. and you can't figure out what the answer is, of course, you know what that is, right? That's an inherited emotion. And so sometimes we receive inherited, uh, we receive emotional energy from mom or dad at the moment of conception, and that's what's going on here. Um, and science is now bearing this out. They're finding that lower animals receive some kind of uh, invisible uh, energetic memory that can pass down from an ancestor who had a traumatic event. And these can go up to 14 generations down the line in lower animals and in human beings can go even further. So let's take a look at this. Is this an inherited emotion? That's strong. I get a yes answer. Is it inherited crying? No. Is it inherited discouragement? No. Is it inherited rejection? This is an inherited emotion of rejection. Did you get this from your father? No. So this came from your mother. Did your mother get this from somebody earlier? Yes. From her mother? Yes. Okay, so we have mother and your grandmother. And did, she, did your grandmother get this from somebody earlier? Yes. From her mother? Yes. And did she get it from her mother? Yes. Okay, so we have four generations there. Mother, 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 mother. You got it from her mom. We got it from her mom, and etc. So four generations, and so we see a pattern here that's formed. Does this go back further? Yes, it does. Does it go back 10 generations? It does. Does it go back 20 generations? No, that's weak. So that's a no. Does it go back 15 generations? No, that's weak. 14? No. 13? No. 12? This goes back 12 generations. So if we say 12 generations times 25.5 years for a generation, 306 years, minus 2018 comes out to about 1712. So uh, I'd say give or take maybe 10 or 20 years. Uh, there was a grandmother of yours around that time who had um, a very, very powerful emotion of rejection. Now, when that energy, when that, when that happened to her, and she felt that rejection so powerfully, uh, her subconscious mind decided that to, to help her posterity to better navigate this world, it would share that energetic memory, that emotional memory with uh, a daughter that she conceived. And then that daughter carried it on and carried it on, carried it on, uh, and uh, you have this energy now. And so now let's ask if we need to know any more about this, and the answer is no. Now what this is doing, understand, what you're seeing here is what we believe really is the most advanced form of, uh, of bioenergetic medicine that's done on the planet. Because what we're doing is we're finding an imbalance in an organ, or in this case a gland, the adrenal gland, your left adrenal gland, which is not happy. And it's unhappy because uh, it's the site of this uh, inherited rejection that goes back 12 generations. This energy is distorting the tissues of the adrenal gland, uh, interfering with the chemical reactions, making um, uh, some sort of compromise to some degree in the blood flow, lymph flow, etc. So it's imbalancing that energy field of the uh, adrenal gland and because that's all the body is, is an energy field. When you distort that energy field, it causes trouble. So let's ask if we need to know more about this, and we don't. So let's go ahead and release this. Now, to release this kind of thing, I'll turn my camera on for a minute. Let me know when you can see me. Yep. What we do is we take a magnet or fingertips, and we do 10 swipes over the governing meridian, just like this, to release that emotional energy. In this case, we're releasing it not only from you. We're releasing it from your mom and from her mom and all those grandmothers of yours all the way back 12 generations. And if you were to go back 12 generations 
and um, and look at that ancestor, that grandmother of yours. How many people, how many cousins, distant, distant, distant cousins of yours could trace their ancestry back to her? How many of them might have received that energy from her? Maybe a lot. Um, did we release that from everybody? Uh, and we did. It cleared from everybody, including you. Mm -hmm. All right, good. So um, now normally what I would have people do at this point uh, is I'd have, you know, I'd have them stand up and walk around and uh, and see how it feels. But um, I know that you're hooked up there, so. <laughs> I'll do that off air. I'll report back. Yeah, report back. So anyway, that's basically uh, how the how the body code works. We ask questions. We allow the body to take us wherever it wants to take us. And, um, and that is, uh, that's really the beauty of it. That you don't really need to, um, you don't really need to have a lot of, you don't really need to have any experience with anatomy or physiology or chemistry, anything like that. The body code is, um, designed for people who really don't know anything about healing at all, but it's designed to enable them within you know, a couple of weeks of study. Uh, to be able to be, actually begin healing themselves and their loved ones. So. Awesome. I, and thank you for sharing, and I'm sure my knee and my body thanks you. For, for people out there to take action today, I always like to give people mm -hmm. a homework assignment. You used to have the emotion code for free on your website. Do you still mm -hmm. have that? We do still. It'll be for a limited time, I think, because now we're signing with this major publisher. We haven't signed quite yet. So the book, and I'm not sure what they're going to do because they're going to have all the rights to the book. But if you go to emotioncodegift.com, yep. you can download the book. And uh, you can also go on your, uh, if you have a, a phone, a smartphone, you can uh, go to either the App Store or the Google Play Store. And you can download the app on your phone. And it looks like this. Very cool. And uh, there's a play button there. You can press play, and it will actually play the whole book for you. And there's a, an interactive chart of emotions on there, too. So you can touch a chart, and it'll blow it up. And if you're not sure what something is, touch it again. It'll give you the definition. So um, so that's actually free. It was $1.99, and we, uh, we just made it free. And, again, that also will probably be available for free for a limited time. That's on – the Google Play Store or the App Store, just search for The Emotion Code. And that's the best place to start, really, because um, you saw that some of the stuff that we found on you today was emotional. In fact, mm -hmm. you know, both things that we found were emotional. But uh, with the body code, uh, it opens up the entire body so that you can read it like a book and find out what the real underlying causes are uh, of whatever situation, whatever symptoms you're having. The beauty of that is that... Um, you know, we all want to maximize our time here. We all want to live as long as we can live. We all want to be as healthy as we can be. And the body code is uh, really this remarkable new method of enabling all of us to do just that. And it's very, very simple. Um, in fact, kids can do it, and kids are doing it around the world. So uh, you don't have to have an advanced degree of any kind. We have lots of people using it of all persuasions um, all over the world. So. We, we've only got about a minute left, and so I was thinking of asking about for kids, and, and you've, you've affirmed kids can use it, so it's good for kids as well. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really quickly, what about for pets? Oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. It works fantastically well for pets. Um, in fact, I, was just, uh, I just noticed uh, on, our, on our site, there was a, there's a story about um, uh, a dog that was having terrible problems on the 4th of July. Um, terrified of all the noises and they worked on it using the body code, cleared some things and now the dog is totally fine. So the body code works with animals. <laughs> yes. <woo -hoo. laughs> works great with animals and kids and, and everybody else. Awesome. So any last words of wisdom you want to share, Dr. Brad? Well, um, I would just, uh, yeah, I would just share that we're in this new, uh, this new age. Now the world is trying to transform into a whole new world and uh, in order to get there, we have to raise everybody to a higher vibration. And we do that one person at a time. You can do that yourself using the body code, using the emotion code. You can help your family to raise to that level of higher vibration as well. It's all about more love, more gratitude, and uh, living in a better world that's coming. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love it, love it, love it. And I want to say if you also want to raise your vibration, uh, get out on a boat with a surfboard behind you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>
So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get a motion code and the body code, and begin discovering your body's wisdom today and shine bright. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Brad. This is phenomenal as usual. And um, I cannot say enough great stuff, period, about your work. And, and this takes it to a whole new level. Oh, man. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for having me on. That was really fun. You know, we should do another show sometime. We could do a show about uh, and just talk about inherited stuff. We could do a show and just talk about animal stuff. You know, do a show about the heart wall. I don't know if we've done that. I know this is probably what our third show. This is our, I believe it's our third show. Um, yeah. I'm game. I'm definitely game. Yeah, just let me know. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also, leave your comments. Have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>